Get up. Excuse Mother. me. Oh, thank God. Help me. Please help me. Come on, love. Are you hurt? No, no, I'm all right. But him, you keep him away from me. I think you'd better come along with me, sir. But... Shall we go, sir? And you'll send someone round with it? Well, right away. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'll give you a message and thank you. Bye bye. Ooh, just what I need. Put it here. You'll be lucky. It's for her ladyship. Mm. Oh, hang about. Yes. Ah, oh, Jim. Oh, thank you. I ran thank Harper's. They're sending someone around with the lady's hand. Oh, get someone to bring it in. Oh, do you have mercy? I'm so sorry. Uh, are you all right? Have you burnt your hand? No, 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 no I'm fine. But, uh, I'm just a bit wet. Use these, Joan. Can oh. you get Lady Morella another cup? Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry yeah. to be such a nuisance. Oh, Perhaps you'd better bring the next one in a baby's bottle. Oh. So, she really is a ladyship. Really and truly. Oh, drop lifting, was she? Who gave you this idea? Well, then why you nick her? I didn't. I rescued her from a rather tasty number. I nicked him. Oh, fancy him, please. <laughs> Where is he? Downstairs with the heavy mob. I only wanted to speak with her. What about? Something private. You'll have to do better than that. What was this private something? It doesn't matter. Not now. Oh, yes, it does. It matters to us. You were trying to pick her up, weren't you? Pick her up? Do you mean... <sighs> That's horrible. No. Hey, what do you mean, horrible? Good-looking woman. Not short of a few, Bob. Prefer older women, then, do you? No, but he seems to. You're disgusting. She's a lady. Oh, and you'd know the difference, would you? Do you know what I reckon? Nope, and I don't want to. In spite of your posh talk, I reckon you're some kind of gigolo looking for a rich woman. I don't know what you're talking about. And neither, I suspect, do you. You suspect? You suspect? No, Sully, we do the suspecting. That's our business, our trade, and you are a very suspicious character. Now then, why did you want to speak to her? And don't give me any more of this I've got a secret crap. I wanted to ask Lady Morell a question. What question? Can you remember the first time you saw him? Yes, it was about three months ago. Not long after my husband died. That would be what, June? Yes, June. Uh, where was this? Outside my flat. Lounge Square? Yes. I glanced out of the window one evening and he was standing on the pavement opposite. He looked sad and rather lost. Well, I thought no more about it. And then about two hours later, yes, it must have been all of that because it was starting to get dark and I went to draw the curtains and he was still there, just standing, looking up at my window. What did you do? Well, I telephoned down to the porter. He went out to speak to him. He gave one last glance up at my window and he walked away. What did the porter say? Oh, he said something about him being a burglar, you know, spying out the land. Ridiculous. Why is it ridiculous? Well, he certainly didn't look like a burglar. Oh. What does a burglar look like, Lady Morell? If only we knew. Did the young man say anything to the porter? Yes, he said he was sorry if he'd worried me. And then he said something rather odd. He said he had a right. Had a right? What? Um... To worry you? No. No, I think he meant just to be there. Well, the young man hasn't been very forthcoming. Hmm? You got a name? The name on the credit cards and checkbook reads R.D. Gov. Are you in charge here? That's why they call me Gov. <laughs> name? It's there. No, we've got a name on some documents found in your possession, but we're not to know they're yours. So, name? Roland Devis. It's better. Just one D, say so. Date of birth? 14th of June, 1957. Address? Flat 4, Nevin Chambers. That's what? Uh, Earl's Court? Yes. 
Right, Miss Davis. Now we know who you are, perhaps we can stop buggering about. What were you doing molesting the widow of a high court judge in a department store? I was not molesting Mr. Lady... Davis, you are in a very parlous position. Do you know what parlous means? You do? No parlous? Iffy, Gub. Only more so. Much more so. Hmm? Well? My reasons for wishing to talk with Lady Morell were private and personal, very personal. I've already caused her a great deal of distress. I don't wish to embarrass her by... by bruting those reasons about to all and sundry. Do you know bruting? Well, I'm a few bars. Start me off. You're all right. Frank? Now, he's not all and sundry. He's strictly regulations. That's to stop me hitting you or you hitting me. Mr. Davis, do yourself a favor. I'm waiting. The next time was at the Royal Academy Summer Show. You know that feeling you get when someone's watching you? Well, I turned round and there he was, not ten feet away, standing in a doorway, staring. Staring? Well, maybe not staring. He was just looking at me very intently, as if he was summing me up. It was most unnerving. Yeah, I'm sure it must have been. And what was this? This was the uh, fifth time that you'd seen him. Were there any other times? I mean, before this morning. Oh, yes, lots in Harrod's food hall. Another day, coming out of my hairdressers, everywhere I went. I was almost afraid to go out. Lady Mary, why on earth didn't you report this to the police? I felt embarrassed, Inspector. How would it have looked? A woman of a certain age claiming that she's seeing things. What would you have thought? Well, I, I would have looked into it. I mean, if someone is being harassed, we want to know about it. Hmm. Well, now, look, you tell me exactly what happened this morning. I went to Harper's to buy a present for my niece. While I was standing at the counter, someone came and stood beside me. I didn't even need to look. I just sensed that it was him. I was terrified. I turned round, and he reached out as if to touch me. And I just panicked. I had to get away from him. Who is he? What does he want from me? Sergeant, the bag's arrived. No answer to that. Lady Morell's handbag. Yeah, thanks, Dan. Oh, you took your time. I went to the wrong bloody nick, didn't I? West End Central. Oh, now, look, I told that man seven dials. Why the hell didn't he tell me, the silly old puff? All right, give it here. Mr. Floyd said I was to give it to her personally. She's an old and valued customer. Don't you trust me? Why should I? The way I've been messed about today, I don't trust anybody. All right, suit yourself. This way. Excuse me, ma'am. Young lady has bought Lady Morell's bag. Oh, oh, that is kind of you. Thank you very much. Mr. Floyd said I was to ask if you'd be good enough to check the contents, madam. Oh, no. I'm sure there's no need for that. Oh, very well. Yes? Checkbook? Keys? Wallet? It's all here. Oh, please. Take this, and thank you very much. Oh, I couldn't, ma'am. Oh, no, 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 I insist. It's been so much trouble for you, and it must have quite ruined your lunch hour. Please. Well, thank you very much. This is the young girl who was serving me. Uh, did you see what happened at the counter? Well, no, I'd gone to get a silver picture frame from the main showcase. But when I got back, the lady had gone. There was just her handbag on the counter. Did you see anyone else there? I mean, before you left the counter? No. Well, mind you, I was gone for a few minutes. Hmm. Right, well... Thanks very much. Okay. Oh, please, thank Mr. Floyd for me and tell him I will take that picture frame. Can you charge it to my account and send it to me? Yes, of course, madam. Yes, madam, no, madam. Three bags full, madam. Silly old cow. Oh, she just gave you a tenner. Well, I'm not. She can afford it. Can you get a lunch break? Yeah, if I'm a good boy. Do you want to buy me a burger? Buy your own. Well, why not? You can afford it. Well, sod off, then. Peter, can you get Lady Morella another cup of tea? She actually seems to like the stuff. Ah, uh, must be nostalgie de la boue. What? Oh, it means a yearning for mud. Rich folk have it. So indulge the ladies. Thank you. A minute. Yes. Lady Morell's still in there? Yes. What's she like? She's a lovely lady. Mm. Why? You reckon she can stand another shock? What kind of shock? Our mystery molester downstairs is claiming that she's his mother. What? That's what the man said. You want to tell him? Give me a minute. Do you mind?
mind if I have a cigarette? No, of course not. Yeah. Thank you. Filthy habit. Where is he? Yeah, downstairs. May I see him? Don't you uh, think it would be better to wait until we've uh, checked his story? I think I've kept him waiting long enough, don't you? Twenty-seven years. Oh, it's him. He knew all those details. He even looks like... his father. Please let me see him. Well, if, uh, if you're sure. Yes, I am sure. I don't even know his name. The Devis. Roland Devis. Roland. I like that name. Mm. Lady Moran, you don't want him to see you like this. No. No, he mustn't see me like this. It's just that all those years. I don't think a week went by when I didn't think about him. Was he all right? Happy? Now I'm going to find out and I'm afraid. Well, I expect he must be afraid too. Yes. Yes, he must be. My husband knew nothing about him. Oh, he tried to speak to me and I treated him like a criminal. Yes. Language might have dried up. And that was the big dark secret. The lady Muck was up the dock when she was just a chit of the girl. Stroll on. Oh, how delicately you put it. What's the matter with you? Don't you like happy endings? It's not ended yet, though, is it? Well, it has as far as we're concerned. Oh. All right. Who shout is it? Paul or Sundry? Sundry. I knew I should have kept stall down it. Maggie, same again? Uh, yeah, I've had some clemmers with ice, right? Pete? Oh, I'm oh, 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 the same. <laughs> Jack? Mm. What did he say? He'll have the same. Bit of lemon sour grapes. Double scotch, right? Yeah. So you bought his story? Well, why not? She did. Well, she would, wouldn't she? Now, what do you mean by that? I mean, she recently widowed, rich and lonely. Now, get to that point, Jack. All that repressed guilt, sexually terrified. Well, how'd you work that out? I mean, she admits she had a child. And then ups and marries a man old enough to be her father. Too old to get it up. Oh, sorry, Mag. I keep forgetting you're not one of the lads. No, think about it. She was a sitting duck. You say he never showed till her old man snuffed it. That's right, why? Shows great delicacy of feeling, does that? Or low cunning. High court judges, you do not mess with. And she inherited a bundle? No kids by her marriage? Where are they now? Well, actually, they've gone off to have lunch together. Mm. Cozy. Guess it'll be paying. You don't love people very much, do you? No, not a lot. My basic rule of thumb is always assume people are rotten. That way, you can only ever be pleasantly surprised. I don't think I can live with that kind of philosophy. Never let me down. Well, all right, then tell me this. If he isn't a son, how do you know all those details about her? I mean, about the baby's birth, the adoption, all that. Tell me that, Paul. Just the question he'd have wanted you to ask to put you off the more obvious one. Yeah, what's that? Look, he knew where she'd had the kid, when, and that she'd had it adopted, right? Right. But he only knew her maiden name. So how did he find her? How did he find her after all this time? Ah, he's a villain. A right one. Smell of a mile off. Yes, hello? No, I'm still here. Is she still at lunch? Well, is there anyone there that can talk to me? No, no, it's all right. I'll, uh, I'll hang on. 
I'm off to lunch. Right. Any trouble occurs, cope. I'll uh, be back about four-ish. It's a long lunch. Family business. You see what I just saw? It depends what you think you just saw. Oh, I saw it all right. Russell with a very fanciable bird. Yeah. She was a cracker. He's really letting himself go. She couldn't have been more than 20. Really? Oh, hello. Mrs. Hardesty? Yes, this is Detective Inspector Forbes, Seven Dials Police Station. Yes, that's right. I was wondering if you could help me. I'm making some inquiries about how an adopted person can find their real parents. No, 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 no. It, it's not me. It's, it's someone who's helping us. Yeah. Well, no, I, I realize that you can't give that sort of information on the phone. I was wondering, have I got a pop round and see you? What, this afternoon? Yes, fine. Okay. No, it's all right. I'll find it. Right. Yeah, tell me. So he's back to being a suspect, is he? Yeah, thanks to you. Don't I detect the usual few degrees of frost? No, not this time. You set me straight. You were right. There was so much raw emotion flying around this morning that I wasn't asking the right questions. Now I'm going to. Better late than never. Yes, well, preventing crime is better than solving it. How's that for a thought for the day? You're convinced he's up to no good, aren't you? Yep. She's a rich woman and very vulnerable. You talk to him, uh, how'd he strike you? Shifty. One minute, all love and tender concern for the lady. The next, arrogant, sarky, too bloody cocky by half. Highly indignant at the suggestion that he might be a crook. Overconfident? Way over. You, uh, might almost say innocent? Oh, no, look, man, you've questioned innocent people, folks with nothing at all to hide. But for some reason, even the innocent ones sort of clam up, their mouths go dry. For good or ill, they're uneasy, they're scared of the law, right? Not so Roland. He was so, I don't know, cool, acted a part, playing with us, you know what I mean? Hmm. Anyway, thanks anyway. Any time, Mag. Here, would you reckon to Russell's new bird, then? You uh, said she was attractive. Calendar stuff. What's he got that I haven't? A daughter. That was absolutely delicious. And how clever of you to suggest it. John and I often ate here. He always had the halibut. Yes, I know. Um, the waiters, they all seem to know you. Mm, they do a passable soul, Valeska. Sauce was a little too sticky for me. And these, well, they just don't know, do they? What don't they know? Oh, two forks for fish, always. Oh, really? Oh, yes, a friend of mine called these Edwardian Aravistes. <laughs> Isn't that amusing? <laughs> Look, love, I didn't ask for the history of the British Civil Service. What are you doing about it? Well, that's what you said last week, and the poor little bitch is still waiting. <laughs> Now, no more excuses. Just pull your bloody finger out. Well, uh, Detective Inspector Forbes, we spoke on the telephone. Sit yourself down. Do you realize this poor girl lost her payment book three weeks ago and she's still waiting for a new one? I don't know. Trying to get the DHSS off their asses is like banging your head against a brick wall. She's got an 18-month-old child with acute bronchitis. Why am I shouting at you? Because I'm here? Sorry. Why are you here? Jerry Prosser said you might be able to help. Prosser? Prosser. Oh, yes, probation officer. Nice chap. Terrible skin. How? Oh. He said you used to work with an adoption agency. That's right. Before I came here, unwanted babies to unmarried mothers seemed like a logical progression. <laughs> So what's your problem? Well, a young man has turned up claiming to be the illegitimate son of a very rich woman. So? Well, he knew all the details about our baby's birth, the adoption, everything. What I want to know is, if he is a crook, how could he have found all that out? And how long is a piece of string? Perhaps he met a man in a pub. Well, Jerry Prosser said there was a, 
way that adopted people could find out details from their birth records? There is, but not Crooks. Since the Children's Act of 75, adults who were adopted can apply to the Registrar General for details of their natural parents, usually the mother. They have to fill in a form giving details of adopted parents. Names, dates. But if your bloke is a crook, he wouldn't have any of those, would he? What if he used somebody else's name, a friend that he knows is adopted? Impossible. Why impossible? Well, they don't just send the details back by return of post, you know. If they have anything, the chap would have to say a counsellor. Counsellor what? As a safeguard built into the Act. The counsellor has to interview any applicant to make sure they understand the full implications of what they're doing. Implications? Well, think about it. Even if he finds his natural mother, and that's bloody difficult, it could cause ructions. Chances are she's married, had a family, never told her husband about her past. The man is shocked when he comes knocking at the door for all of them. Yeah, I see what you mean. Then again, he may have some idealised picture of his mother. What happens if he finds some drunken old trollop with a bottle of meth under the bed? The counsellor has to make him aware of all the emotional hazards involved on both sides. Not to mention the shock he may be causing the real parents. I'm not with you. The real parents? The adopting parents, dear. They are the real parents, aren't they? The natural mother gives birth, the real parents give the love. That's the difference. Simple. Well, this young man claims that his adoptive parents were killed in a car smash when he was uh, 13. Uh, that's when he found out that, that he, he was, was adopted. adopted. Oh, poor kid. All set to mourn mum and dad, only they weren't mum and dad. Mm. Oh, think how confused he must have been. If it's true. Anyway, a chum of mine at Oxford has a father in advertising and he took me on. It's all a bit bogus, actually, but the money was good. I was with them for three years and then decided to have a go on my own. Was that wise? With the recession and everything? Oh, yes. The less money people have to throw about, the more they need people like me to persuade them to buy stuff they don't need. That sounds frightfully cynical. Oh, it's not my theory, you understand. No, my ex-boss, he used to say, invention was the mother of necessity, and as long as that was so, we'd all make a lot of tin. I see. Do you make a lot of tin? All comes and goes. Mostly goes, hence my present embarrassment. Oh, I'm glad you reminded me. I must let you have that check. Uh, Pas de vent, mother. Waiters can be so censorious. Oh. Something to follow? No. No, thank you. Just coffee. Yes. And I wonder if they have a really good Armagnac. Mm. What did the woman think? Can you tell me her name? No, I'm uh, afraid I can't do that. But she is absolutely convinced. She says that he even looks like his father. Well, that doesn't prove anything. After 27 years, he could look like an orangutan and she'd see a resemblance. She wants to. <laughs> when a woman's giving away a child, whatever pressure she was under at the time, afterwards she's haunted, never lets go, wondering, worrying. I used to get letters from women desperate to find their adopted child, not to interfere, mm. just to make sure they were all right. Letters that would break your heart. <laughs> Nothing I could do, of course. The law doesn't allow it. Yes, lady. The lady in question said something like that. <laughs> Nearly. Look, proving he's a crook may be a bit of a pill. Let's try it the other way round. See if he's on the level. Can uh, you do that now? I can have a go. I've got a lot of contacts. I could uh, make a few phone calls, cut a few corners. I'll need to have his name, though. All right. Like that, the parrot. And he turned the pole a bit. Well, get out, Pete. Make his own walk about. You've got a bone in your arm. Well, that's the parrot. He turned the pole a bit and he said, if I catch you wearing my pajamas again, back to Paul's office. May I speak to the inspector, please? I'm afraid she's out on an inquiry, madam. Oh, do you know when she'll be back? No, I can't say. Uh, can I take a message? Yes. Would you tell her that Ruth Morell rang and asked her to come and see me? It's rather urgent. She has my address. Uh, yes, of course, Lady Morell. I'll tell her the moment she gets in. Thank you. She wasn't there. Right. No. No. No record of an application for birth records from anyone called Delis. 
Did he say where he was born? Yeah, maternity home, just outside Godalming. What for? That was the name of the village, yes, do you know it? Of it, yes. Very posh. Expensive. Used to cater for well-heeled ladies. Debs who forgot to keep their legs crossed in taxis. All very discreet. Had to be. We're talking about the days before the pill and abortion on demand. Run by a Dr. McEwen. I met him once. Oh? Hmm. House of Commons. A crowd of us went to lobby about the abortion bill. Good man. Small, shock of white hair. Hmm. Must be dead by now. The clinic closed, I think. But it was all strictly about board. He used to arrange private adoptions, found good homes for the kids. <laughs> Just think. Oh, Dr. McEwen. Oh! Hello, Maureen. Hello, Mr. Dodson. Uh, look, love, love, give me a sec. Oh, OK. Uh, hello, Rebecca. How's my best girl? This is Rebecca. Hello. Isn't she lovely? Could you... I, I, I won't keep right. a minute, dear. Thanks. <laughs> look, uh, you leave this with me and I'll have a sniff around. I can't promise anything, well, mind. Thanks very much, Mrs. Harness. I didn't mean to put you to all this trouble. No trouble, dear. It's that poor woman I'm worried about. If he is a crook, it'll cut her to ribbons. Yes, well, perhaps we can prove he isn't. Then we can both sleep soundly at last. <laughs> right. Goodbye, thanks. Anything comes up, I'll ring you. Oh, right. Could you, yes. Uh... Right. Come on in, Maureen. I'll put the kettle on. Thanks, Oh, I think I found you a playpen, but the buggers are being difficult about a high chair. I don't know, Mike. I'm not a bloody keeper. No, I don't know. Hey, hang on. Maggie! It's for you. Oh, ma'am, there was a message. Now, now, Pete, it's, uh, it's the boyfriend. Hello, Mike. Where you been? Working. Look, I'm at Lady Morell's flat. She's been done for stuff worth a quarter of a million. What? Now, how can you get here? I'm there. Ma'am, there was a message. Now, now, Pete, later. It's not your message. You'll have to wait. Lover's tryst. No, you're wrong. Quite wrong. Roland had nothing to do with this. How can you be so sure? You know practically nothing about him. Look, Inspector Turnbull is right, Lady Morell. He turns up this morning, this afternoon, you're robbed. It's got to be more than coincidence. But how could he have done it? He was at your police station all morning. Then we went to lunch. We were at the restaurant till gone three. We went to the bank and then I dropped him off at the travel agent and came straight here. We were only apart for 20 minutes at the most. How could he have done it? He may not have been working alone. He may have had an accomplice. Now you're being absolutely ridiculous. Look, I understand how you feel. Believe me, you don't want to think badly of Roland because you think he's your son. He is. He is my son. What exactly was taken? A very important collection of portrait miniatures. Did uh, Roland know about these miniatures? Well, he may have done. It's a very well-known collection. He never mentioned them. But Roland knows he can have anything I have. Why should he rob me? Why did he go to the travel agent? To book a cruise. We thought about it at lunchtime. Chance to get to know each other and to talk. It seems like a good idea. You say you went to the bank. Did you give him any money? Yes, yes, for the deposit. Well, he explained that he was short of money. How much? What? How much money did you give Roland? Four thousand pounds. As much as that. Cruises are expensive. And you were expecting him two hours ago. I think you've seen the last of him, don't you? He'll be long gone by now. You're wrong, both of you. I don't care about the money. The Roland, you just don't know him. He's got such courage. His adoptive parents were killed when he was just a child. He went to foster parents, council homes, but he rose above all that. He went to Oxford on a scholarship. He got a first-class degree. You can't be right. You just mustn't be right. What's going on? What's happened? Inspector, what is all this? Oh, Rowan, thank God. Well, are you all right? Won't someone please tell me what's happened? Uh, Lady Morell has been robbed, sir. Robbed? When? Mr. Davis, where were you between now and when you left Lady Morell? I went to the travel agents. Which one? Hayes and Greenway, Piccadilly Arcade, to book a cruise. We sail in three weeks. Uh, you've been there all this time? Well, no, I... Where else have you been, sir? I had some business to attend to, and then I went back to my flat. It suddenly dawned on me that my passport might be out of date, so I went home to check it out. And is it? 
No, as it happens, but I haven't used it for some time, and I wasn't sure. Now, you are sure? Yes, thank you. Quite sure. You say you've booked a cruise? Yes. Here we are. Thank you very much, Mr. Devious. I'm sure you'll appreciate in the circumstances we have to ask these questions. I told you, but you wouldn't believe me. I did tell them, Roland. Well, that's all right, Mother. They're only doing their job. Well, I can see it must look pretty fishy to them. They have to rule me out as a suspect. I quite understand. Well, I don't. I'm sure you only have my best interests at heart, Inspector, but I would like you to leave now. But, Mother, the lady was only being thorough. You mustn't blame her. Lady Morell? Excuse me. Maggie? Yeah. I'm going home. No, I'm going back to the office. I've got a time to report, sir. I've just got to finish the inventory and I'll pop round, okay? Oh, right. Thank you. Nearly finished. No. Fancy a touch of the collar of curry house? Mm, what? Skip it. Is this what it would be like? What? Marriage. Us two sitting at opposite ends of the sitting room, both typing out our reports. Not always. I might be ironing. I hate ironing. Perhaps that's what love is. Never having to say who's going to do the ironing. Oh. Why do you put up with me? Well, you're a reasonably good-looking woman, and you do a good breakfast. Oh, ask a silly question. He's a crook. Who is? Davis. Ah, but can you prove it? No, that's another thing. What is? Well, hanging around, just staring at her. I mean, if he really is her son, why didn't you just go up to her and just say to her... What? Hello, Mum. Well, all right, yes. Too shy. Softening her up? Fattening her up for the kill? You've been watching too much telly. You say uh, Turnbull's handling the robbery? Yes, sir. But you don't think Devis is involved? No. Oh, come on. He's got to be. He's a villain. I put money on it. Fiver? Right. You're on. You heard that, Gob. You reckon Devis is bent? So why the bet? I can't prove it. I mean, I can't. I'm damn sure Slater can't. So even if neither of us get a collar on Devis, at least I'm five quid to the good. There's got to be a flaw there somewhere. Mum, there's a woman called Hardesty on your phone. It sounds a bit excited. Thanks, Jim. Oh, Joan. Uh, you Nick Davis. What do you think of him? Oh, she could eat him with a spoon, Gov. Morning. Thank you, Joan. Uh, yes, M Mrs. Hardesty, look, would, would, you, would you get to the point, please? We've got him. Nailed him. You're Davis. Well, how? What have you got? Someone told me about a midwife. She lives in Godling. She used to work at that clinic. You know, the one that closed. Now, what's her address? No, it's not her you want. She told me about the caretaker. The house is derelict now, but he still lives in a cottage on the grounds. Yeah. Well, what, what's he got to do with him? His name, dear. Devis. Reginald Devis. Mrs. Hardesty, you are a gem, and you have just lost me five pounds. You fancy a trip to Godalming? What for? Davis, we've got a lead. Wow. Well, if it concerns Lady Morell, yeah, let's watch our backs. Pete, Mike Turnbull's going to come in about that robbery. Would you tell him I think I've got a lead on Davis? Uh -huh. Check. That girl, the handbag girl. What about her? Well, I might reckon that someone used keys to get into Lady Morell's flat, and that girl had access to her handbag. Check it out. Give Mike a ring. 
Jake, will you put a tail on Devious? I may need to pick him up in a hurry. Nothing too obvious. If he gets on to us, uh, he might make a break for it. Will you fit? I'm with her. Um, she wouldn't have had time not to rob that flat before coming here with the bag. Ever heard of keys cut while you wait? Police officers, we'd like a few words. Just a minute. <laughs> Roland, is it? That's right. You don't seem very surprised. I'm not. Do you always get police officers calling about Roland? No. You're the first. Only a matter of time, though. What's he done? We're just making a few inquiries. Must be something bad if it's Roland. Oh, why'd you say that? He's rotten. I'll make tea. Adopted? Well, he would say that, wouldn't he? Why would he, Mr. Davis? Well, he always found me and his mum a bit of a disappointment. A bit of an embarrassment. Not what he wanted. But Roland was born here, wasn't he? Oh, yeah. November it was. Scorpio, see? My Vera was up at the house, helping in the kitchens when her pains come on. Old McEwen took her straight up to the delivery room. Couldn't have had better treatment if she'd been one of them rich ones, paying all them guineas. Well, she had to have a caesarean. Roland had to leave his scar, didn't he? Scorpio, see? When did you last see him? He had some funny ideas. Even as a kid. Always reading. Filling himself full of nonsense. He got a book once from Guildford Library, all about you and non you. Do you ever read that book? No. Yeah, I do. It's a load of rubbish. Not to Roland, it wasn't. It's Bible. Well, me and Vera, we thought it was some kind of a game, so we we tried to join in. Serviettes is napkins, dentures is false teeth. And he really got angry with his mum when she forgot and called it the toilet. Had to be the lavatory. U stands for upper class. Oh. That's what we had the big row about. What? The lab at the toilet when he was still at college. Oxford? No, teacher training college, Snaresbrook. You see, one of my Vera's bonds come up. And she only had five. But one of them came up and she won a thousand pounds. So we put 500 quid in the post office for Roland and used the rest to buy a brand new bathroom suite to surprise him. Avocado green it was. Oh, lovely. Yeah, same as mine. Really? Yeah. Lovely, isn't it? <laughs> uh, Roland didn't think so. Oh, no. When he came home on his holidays, you know what he said? He said he should have bought a white suite, Dad. All the best houses have white. Well, his mum was, was near to tears and just said, Why, Roland, why? And he said, So that they can see that the servants clean it properly. Coloured sweets are so vulgar. Well, his mum just... just bust out crying. So, so I went for him. Well, after that, he... he bunged a few things in his old hall. And off. It's the last I heard of him. Oh, no. No, I tell a lie. He sent me a card. Christmas after Vera died. There was a 20 pound note stapled to it. And he'd underlined Mary in red biro. But I explained about that. West End Central know nothing about it. You weren't there. Well, it must have been one of the other ones then. I like to try for Bine Street, Bow Street. Come on, Julie, we're not playing bloody Monopoly. You left Harper's and you had those keys cut. Now, where? Who put you up to it, Judy? 
What do you mean? Come on, you couldn't have thought up by yourself. It's your boyfriend, wasn't it? What boyfriend? It was Roland, wasn't it? I don't know any Roland. All right. You can carry the camp for the lot. Quarter of a million. Do you reckon? Oh, I don't know, what, five years? Quarter of a million? The bastard, the rotten poxy bastard. He gave me 50. A lousy 50 quid. Who did, Judy? Ah, uh, lovely it used to be. Not anymore, though. Been left to rot. Like me. Speculators bought it in 73, but they, uh, they couldn't get permission to demolish it. You say Roland used to play out there? Yeah, yeah, all the time. I had to take my belt to him. Well, it could have been dangerous up there on his own. What did he do up there, do you know? Yeah, made himself a den. A den? Yeah. You know, a den. You never have a den when you was a kid? No. I did. It was the old doctor's room. Oh, lovely it was. All that scroll work on the ceiling. He found some bits of furniture that had been left behind. A couple of chairs, table. He even got a bed from somewhere. He must have spent weeks cleaning the place up, getting rid of all the old papers and stuff. Papers? What papers? Oh, papers. Tea chests full. Left behind. What kind of papers? Oh, medical papers and that. Old files and stuff. It was only written on one side, so Roland used to draw on the backs of them. He must have had a room full of them. Are they still there? No. No, I got rid of all his stuff after Vera died. Clothes, books, papers. And a bonfire. Palafin, matches. It seemed best. Did I do wrong? No, Mr. Davis. Many thanks, Mr. Davis. Thanks for your help. We uh, may need to get in touch again. Oh, right here. But, but not Roland. I don't want to set eyes on him. Ever. You stop him. You stop him hurting. Do that. We got Lady Merle's stuff back. That girl? Right. She had the keys cut in Harper's basement. Silly cow even asked for staff discount. Is Davis involved? No. The boss put her up to it. A man named Floyd. They're just about to charge him. Did you pick up Davis? No problem. Gov your governor's been on the blower. Seems Lady Merle's doing a fruit about you persecuting her little boy. She's upstairs. Blast. And he's not a little boy. Yeah, all right. I'll give him a bell. Where have you got Davis? He's downstairs, screaming blue murder about witch hunts. Mm. Witches always do. Right, give us a couple of minutes. I'd like to sit in on that. Yeah, yeah okay. It could be nasty. I don't think I could face Lady Morell right now, not with what I've got to tell her. We've got her miniatures back. That should brighten her day. Somehow I doubt it. And just what do you imagine you can charge me with? Well, for starters, how about obtaining money by criminal deception? Wrong. Oh? I have obtained no money from Lady Morell. Well, at least you're not still calling her mother. Yes, well, that would be a bit ludicrous under the circumstances. How was Dad? Still whinging? Yes, he doesn't think very much of you, either. Now, then, Lady Morell gave you £4,000. Correct. A deposit on a cruise. I paid it to the travel agents. You uh, saw the receipt. All right. How about obtaining a cruise by criminal deception? Sorry. Lady Morell made me a temporary loan. I repaid her this morning. And paid the outstanding balance on the cruise for both of us. Some £7,000 in all. Where did you get some £7,000 in all? I sold a small parcel of shares. You may check this with my bankers and Lady Morell's. And in case you intend to be really tiresome, I also paid for yesterday's luncheon. I think that settles the money side of things. Anything else? Just a little matter of pretending to be her son. As you say, a little matter. It'll never come to court. Oh, really? You seem very sure of that. I am. Your legal bods would hardly agree to subjecting Lady Morell to that kind of ordeal. Having to stand up in court and admit to a judge she probably knows socially she's been a slag. I think not. Is that how you see her? A slag? And that is a non-new word. May I go now? No. I have to check your story with your bank. I've instructed my bankers to tell your people anything they wish to know. I hope for your sake that the travel agents also confirm your story. Oh, they will. Hayes and Greenwood. Piccadilly Arcade! 
this. You bastard. I know I stopped myself. What's that? It's a load of miniatures. Mine's a Quantro. Ah, uh -huh, very droll. What's upset you? Roland Davis is Mr. Clean. Maggie Forbes. Over there. By the way, your uh, bulletproof vest. Thanks. And if the travel agents confirm his story, will he get onto the bank and check that he's got sufficient funds to cover both checks? Look, do you mind doing that? Thanks, Jack. Don't thank me. I've got a fiver riding on this. Oh, excuse me, darling. If you're taking her to Lady Morel, be kind to her. Aren't I always? Excuse me, ma'am. What is it, Joe? Sergeant Styles thought these might be important. Well, what are they? Well, it looks like part of an old fashioned card index system. Where did he get this from? Interesting, that. He was keeping Obbo on Davis all morning. You know, if I was doing that, some smart-ass defense lawyer could claim it was a threatening gesture. Mr. Davis, I'm so sorry to have taken so long, but these formalities will be, uh, they do take time. Still, now that we've got a few minutes, uh, you see, what puzzled me was how you managed to find her. I mean, wherever you got your information from, all you had was her maiden name, and let's face it, uh, Miss Ruth Holmes could have gone and married anyone, couldn't she? You're quite a detective yourself, aren't you? Do I have to listen to this? No. But it would be a bit churlish not to. In any case, I want to listen. Shall I tell you how I think you did it? Now, I think you'd have needed more information. I'm sure you know what this is. No, I don't. Mr. Davis was seen to dispose of this in the litter bin this morning. Nice and tidy. Miss Ruth Holmes. Details of a male child, date of birth, weight, etc. Date given for adoption. Ah, here's the most important bit. Her home address. The Manor House, Melbury, Shropshire. Now, I may not be a graduate of, um... Now, where was it? Snaresbrook. Oh, yes, Snaresbrook. Now, I may not be a graduate of Snaresbrook, but even I can see how easy it would be to go up to Melbury and make a few discreet inquiries about what happened to the girl from the manor house. Something like that, was it? Something like that. Excuse me, Gov. We checked with the travel people and Lady Morell. The bank does have funds to cover both checks. Thanks, Jack. Well... If you've quite finished, Not quite. Was it just as easy to find all the others? I don't know what you mean. Oh, I think you do, Mr. Davis. Miss Joanna Dyson, Dyson House, Harley Cross, near Stroud. Miss Harriet Digby Stevens, South Eaton Place. Hmm, London, not so far to travel. Highgate Village, Belgravia. Rich ladies, rich addresses, baby boys, all adopted. Coincidence? Take them all on cruises, did you? Did you take any money from these ladies? Temporary loans, little parcels of shares? Why don't you ask them? I intend to, Mr. Davis. Too bad. Lady Morell and I could have been very happy. I'd have been good to her, you know. Mm. Until her cash ran out. Oh, no fear of that. Do you know how much she's got? I'm sure you do. To the last penny. It was only money, and God knows I can afford it. If we could have been happy, where was the harm? If only you hadn't interfered. Oh, I'm sorry. That sounds ungrateful after all your hard work. Can you give Roland a message for me? I really don't think that. Right, I'll, um, <clears throat> I'll see when he gets it. Thank you. I just want him to know that he needn't worry about his defence. I've retained counsel for him. A friend of my husband's, a good man. Why on earth should you do that for him? Because it just doesn't seem fair to let him take all the blame. Lady Morel, Roland Davis is a cold-blooded swindler. Why on earth should you bother to help him? Because I was just as ready to swindle him. How? By pretending to believe him. Pretending? My son died when he was seven years old. Cerebral meningitis. A very clever private detective told me that 15 years ago. 
Are you saying that you knew all along that Roland Davis was not your son? Yes. But you see, even if all he wanted was money, I wanted my son back. Roland is such fun. A son any mother would be proud of. Except his own? Yes, poor woman. I didn't know about her yesterday. I probably never would have known if you hadn't... Interfered. I was going to say if you hadn't been trying to be so good at your job, Inspector. <laughs>